Much of the build so far has been pretty much identical to the Mark IV predecessor, with the odd few 3D printed parts being slightly more refined with a stronger build material. Nevertheless, with the Mark IV's printer now taking shape and the build coming along nicely, it's time to continue with the biggest upgrade in this model. Nextruder Assembly While the Mark IV came with a completely new extruder design, the Mark IV-S carries a similar contraption to the Mark IV, albeit with some seemingly small refinements that make a rather substantial difference. Those being the new high-flow nozzle, along with 360-degree part cooling thanks to a new fan and duct system. With that said, after removing all electronic and plastic parts, anything labelled an extruder for that matter, across both parts boxes, Let's get started with the extruder idler assembly with these two 3D printed parts. We need to install bearings into this, so begin by inserting 2.9 by 8.5 pins into the lower idler part B and drop on both supplied bearings. Cover with the other half of the lever before securing into place with a single M3 by 6 screw. Take care not to over tighten since we're screwing into plastic here so don't want to strip any threads. In addition, both bearings need to turn freely without any resistance. Once in place from the same side, push a tubular spacer into the assembly. The bottom of the spacer must be flush with the bottom part of the idler assembly as in this example. Place this to one side for the moment while we work on the extruder motor in the meantime. And as you would have probably guessed, it's this motor, conveniently labelled extruder. So with the extruder motor in hand, being the last motor available so not easy to confuse, begin by dropping a 5x10 spacer over the shaft so it rests down the bottom. Next, inside the smaller extruder box you'll find this black packet, which contains the main heatsink. Unlike with the Mark IV build, this time round it comes pre-installed with the filament sensor already. So we can go ahead and lower into position on top of the motor in this orientation. So with the motor cable facing upwards and the heat sink cables facing to the right side. After which we can lower the 3D printed main plate down on top. Notice the orientation of the part here, particularly the small cutout which is in the lower left corner. At this point it's back to the small extruder box within which we find the main gearbox assembly. So we're going to build the gearbox now and it's very important that this is done accurately and correctly. Begin with the gear assembly adapter in hand alongside the actual gear assembly and carefully lower the adapter down on top of the assembly. It should sit flush so that the smaller top gears fit neatly into the pockets in the adapter. Once in place, the next step is to slide the gear ring over the adapter and down into position. Although looking at the teeth in this ring, notice how one side is completely straight while the opposite side is very slightly chamfered. This is important since the chamfered side must face downwards as you lower it into position from the top. So holding the entire assembly between forefinger and thumb, slide the ring down with a slight wobbling motion so that the teeth mesh with the gears until both are flush. Don't be concerned if the ring doesn't feel like it's turning smooth just yet, it will do once the plastic tool has been removed. Now holding the entire structure in place, lower onto the motor shaft so that the shaft enters the hole in the central gear. Do not force the unit down at all, we're letting gravity do all the work here, so slowly turn the entire assembly until it drops itself down into place. After which the gear adapter can be removed. Inspect the assembly, it should look exactly as demonstrated here. The ring gear and the gear assembly should be completely flush. Also note that there must be no gap between the ring and the main plate. If you do see a gap, remove the planetary gear assembly and reposition it again. At this point you can place the gear tool back on the assembly to rotate and ensure everything is completely smooth. Although if you find tolerances are too tight, as in my example here, remove the tool and carefully turn the ring gear alone to ensure the cogs inside are meshed to the central motor pinion and freely rotate. So as we can see here, the central motor pinion is fixed while the gears are rotating around it completely free. Once happy we can proceed to insert the idler assembly we prepared earlier between the ring gear and the extruder motor where there is a cutout for the idler in the main plate. 
Line up the idler spacer with the hole in the ring gear and secure these parts together by inserting a single 3x25 socket set screw. Tighten into position without over tightening. Bear in mind it doesn't go completely in or sit flush with the ring gear, it should protrude slightly above the ring. Now we want to apply a small amount of lubricant all around the inner teeth of the ring and gear assembly. You don't want to go crazy with the grease here, just a small amount is perfectly adequate. It will spread itself around as the cogs turn while in use. We can now take the gearbox cover and flip it over to cover the planetary gear. And secure into place with 3 M3 by 25 screws. Do not over tighten the screws here as it can cause binding. Just a relatively snug fit is all that's required. So extruder really starting to take shape nicely now and it's on to building up more of the idler swivel door that will attach to the side of the extruder. We'll need a couple of small printed parts for this section so with these three pieces to hand we're ready to continue. Begin with a side section and feed through a single M3x20 screw on the larger end. Drop on a spacer before going through the opposite end and securing into place with a single M3 nylon lock nut. Hold the nut and tighten the screw just lightly. The spacer must freely rotate so do not crank down too far on the screw. Onto the opposite end now where we insert the idler nut into the assembly in this orientation. Take special note to ensure orientation of everything is correct before inserting a single M3 by 20 screw through the parts. And again secure with an M3 lock nut while you tighten the screw. The lock nut will hold the screw in place so no need to go super tight here. The idler nut we inserted into the middle must be able to rotate freely just like the spacer on the other end. Place this to one side for the moment and for now we turn our attention back to the extruder assembly, specifically the top end. We'll need two M3 by 30 screws next so with those to hand drop on a 15 by 5 spring onto each screw before pushing both screws through the protrusion on the heatsink just above the motor. There are no threads inside here so the screws should go straight through and screw directly onto the idler swivel assembly we just prepared. Take care to install in the orientation shown here and stop tightening as soon as the screw tips reach the front face of the idler nut. So at this point take a moment to double check the screw tips are flush and that the orientation is correct with the two arrows visible up top. If all is okay you should now be able to close the idler door and lock it with a reassuring click. Ok so almost ready to attach the entire extruder assembly to the X carriage now. Before doing that though we need to install the NTC thermistor which goes into this hole on the rear motor side of the heatsink. And once in place secure it with an M3x4 grub screw going in from the side. Tighten gently but firmly as applying too much force here could cause permanent damage to the thread so just enough to make sure it's snug. Now turn the assembly over with logo facing you and drop on an M3x12 screw into the centre hole and another two on the right corners. You may find it easier to apply some masking tape to the heatsink here as it will keep the screws in place for the next few steps. So holding the unit upside down Carefully place the heatsink spacer onto the three screws just inserted in this orientation opposite the thermistor previously installed. Next with the fan holder in hand and facing upwards in this orientation feed the thermistor cable through the top cutout and place the holder down onto the screws sandwiching the spacer in between. We're now ready to connect the assembly to the X carriage. To do this place the next extruder with the motor side up onto the previously installed spacers on the X carriage. Note that there is a small cutout in the plastic carriage just here. Guide the thermistor cable through this cutout taking care not to pinch any cables. Once in place and the heatsink screws lined up with the spacers remove the masking tape and proceed to tighten the centre screw just enough so it catches the threads before repeating on the two remaining heatsink screws. Once all three are safely within their threads proceed to tighten all down starting with the centre and then the two corners. With the next router in place now we need to get the thermistor cable connected. Locate the cable channel on the left side of the X carriage before guiding the thermistor wire through the cable channel and up to the love board. 
If your idler door is closed, release it for more space before connecting to the top, just above the larger XBuddy board connector. And then you can close the idler door again. Hot end fan next, which is positioned over the heatsink here. Although note that the side with the sticker goes towards the rear, against the heatsink. In addition, the fan cable must be pointing towards the lower left corner and can feed through the cutout in the fan holder. So once correctly in position, proceed to secure with two M3 by 18 screws. No need to go crazy tight here. Bear in mind you're working with plastic which can crack if you screw in too tight, so just go in until snug. Once in place, guide the fan cable up the cable channel and connect it to the lower slot on the love board. Onto the new part blower fan next, a high turbine style fan that is efficient enough to operate at only 70% speed most of the time, making it more quieter and ramping up as and when it needs to. Anyways, we need to get the new shroud in place first, so we'll need that as well as the fan case cover, all new parts for the Mark 4S. So starting with the main fan case, insert two M3 square nuts into the two available slots on the flat side far enough so that each nut aligns with the holes on the sides. After which we insert a further two M3 square nuts into the opposite side, again ensuring all nuts are in far enough so that they align with all holes. There's one more square nut to insert into the actual fan shroud here, again inserting through to align with the adjacent hole. Next, insert the fan into the fan case with the label facing upwards. It'll only fit in one way so you can't really go wrong before feeding the fan cable carefully through the channel, so that we can place the fan cover flush on top and secure into place with two 3x8 screws. Note there may be some resistance as you drive these screws into place since they're cutting a thread into the plastic as you insert. Do not over tighten and risk stripping the created threads. With that done, we can now attach the fan shroud onto place. Notice two teeth on the fan shroud, these need to slide into the two rectangular holes in the blower assembly, which now acts as a hinge to seat the shroud into place. And secure with a single M3x5 screw, going into the metal nut we previously inserted into the shroud. And we're done with print fan assembly. This provides a 360 degree cooling system and is one of the major upgrades in the Mark IV-S. The high performance turbine coupled with the redesigned fan shroud ensure that cool air is directed precisely onto the print. This solution is much more effective compared to blanket fans because the airflow is not blocked by the print itself. So while the weight of the extruder remains virtually unchanged, the performance is far better. Anyways, time to get this in place in the orientation shown here with the fan held diagonally and open end facing downwards. Begin by guiding the fan cable through the cutout on the left side of the fan holder before sliding the two forks of the fan holder into the two pockets on the sides of the fan blower assembly, far enough so that the holes in the sides are aligned, and secure with two M3x5 screws on the left side before repeating with another two M3x5 screws on the right. That just leaves us with the fan cable, which we can now guide through the cable channel in the X carriage and up to the middle connector on the side of the love board. New print fan assembly installed and complete. With fan cabling all in place now, we can proceed to insert the two hot end thumb screws, just loosely at this point, enough so that they hold in the threads. Okay, so we're onto our hot end assembly, complete with all new high flow nozzle, which now enables faster printing, but also produces more durable prints. It comes pre-installed with a silicon sleeve on the heater block, which you can leave installed throughout. So with it in hand, locate the hole in the heatsink from the bottom of the extruder and gently insert the hot end into the heatsink. While pushing gently up, guide the hot end cables freely to the left side, bearing in mind the nozzle end faces outwards towards you. Once inserted, you should be left with a 2mm gap between the heatsink and the brass part of the nozzle. At this stage, while pushing the hot end assembly in, firmly tighten both thumb screws. Check and ensure no cables are being pinched between the thumb screws and the heatsink. That's the hot end in place now, so the next step is to get it plugged into the love board. To do this, guide the thinner hot end thermistor cable through the cable channel in the X carriage, 
and connect it to the love board in the top left connector, as shown here. Finally, guide the remaining hot end heater cable through the same cable channel and connect it to the love board in the uppermost slot, going in from the left side. Hot end now installed and leaving us with our last part to install here, the side cover door. Simply attach the door hinge into the partnering hinge in the X carriage. Holes in both parts must be aligned, after which we can drop in a single M3 by 30 screw. Before tightening into position, bear in mind you want to tighten all the way, but then back off at least a quarter of a turn, or enough so that the door can swing open and closed relatively freely. All that's left now is to check and connect any remaining components to the love board, starting with the motor cable up top, which plugs directly into the connector right beside it, and next move to the right side and connect the load cell cable coming out the right side of the heatsink to the upper slot on the right side of the love board, and the same with the filament sensor cable which goes into the remaining lower slot. If you've followed this guide closely, your connections should mimic this diagram. At this point, if not already done, close the side idler mechanism before proceeding any further. Finally, reach for the 3D printed love board cover as well as the side plate which we need to install to finish off the extruder completely. Starting with the side plate first, curve and arrange the cables on the right side of the extruder in a clockwise direction before covering with the plate and securing with a single M3 by 10 screw, taking special care not to pinch any cables in the process. This needs to be snug so that the carriage can move all the way to the right and not hit the side, since this can cause calibration errors later. Finally, back up top, push all cables inwards towards the extruder to make more space around them before sliding the love board cover down on top, and proceeding to push it all the way down, taking care not to pinch any cables as you go, and far enough so that the two plastic covers meet together perfectly. And that's our Mark IV-S Nextruder assembly finally complete. This is probably the hardest part of the entire build due to all the small components and connections, and we're on the home run now with the only main part left to install being the bed, although before we do that we're going to finish off the x-axis by tensioning the belt we've previously installed. Belt tensioning may not even be necessary if your belt is already tensioned quite well, but it never hurts to double check. So we begin by slightly releasing all the screws holding the motor, otherwise the tensioner won't work since the motor must be able to move. The idea here is to use the ball end allen key to tighten the screw on the rear side of the X end motor, but after each turn or two check the tension in the belt. Prusa have released a specific app that listens to the tension as you flick the top belt, which is a great concept, but some have reported it to provide inconsistent results, so your mileage may vary. When you achieve optimal tension, tighten the motor screws back up. As a final check, in order to test the tension manually, grasp and hold the flat part of the X motor shaft with pliers to prevent it from rotating. Gently try to move the extruder towards the X motor, gently being the highlighted word here, do not use excessive force. If the belt is stretched properly, you should feel a resistance and the extruder won't move at all. If the belt is too loose, it will deform and create a wave and jump over the teeth on the pulley, for which you need to backtrack and retension the belt before checking again. We're all good in my example, so with that we've completed our Z and X axes. We still have the main bed and Y axes to complete, although before that we'll concentrate on the new injection molded LCD assembly in the next chapter. 